Welcome to Philosophy 102, Introduction to Scientific Reasoning. My name is John Quanvig. Last name is kind of weird, so let me say it again for you. Quan sounds like Q-U-A-N, Vig, V-I-G. Quanvig. It's Norwegian. In any case, my name is John Quanvig. My office is in Wilson 206, but I doubt we'll have a chance to meet at that physical space this semester. Today is the day, this video is the first video for the course, and hence it is devoted primarily to housekeeping. I remember when I was in school, I always hated days where you showed up to class, and if you were interested in the class, it was disappointing because the first thing you did was go through a syllabus. But in any case, that's necessary, so let's do the syllabus, get that out of the way, and then we can turn to the course material. So my name, again, is John Quanvig. I will hold office hours for this class. I'm going to hold them Wednesday morning during the scheduled class time for the class. They will be Zoom meetings. To attend office hours, you register through Zoom, and it will send you a link by email. Registering is one of those things that we've been advised to do to stop people from the outside uh, entering into Zoom meetings and sending material that nobody wants to see. In any case, that will be Wednesday mornings each week for the entire semester. I encourage you to take advantage of that. We can talk about course material or whatever. It would be nice to see you in a Zoom meeting at least once a month. The textbook for the course is the Geary book. Ron Geary is a guy, a philosopher of science, who taught at the University of Minnesota for maybe 30 years. He then retired, and I believe he died maybe 10, 15 years ago. In any case, two other people, Bickle and Malden, liked his textbook so much for his scientific reasoning course that they have updated it with new information and kept it going though it's significantly dated at this point. I think the version we're using is maybe from 2005. But in any case, it's a really nice book. It's divided into two parts, as the course will be for us. The first part, you can see from the course outline, ends at chapter four. So the first four chapters are a bit about the history of science, important episodes in the history of science, and how to understand theoretical hypotheses and the testing that occurs with respect to them. The second half of the course, picking up in chapters five and six, turns to statistical hypotheses and probabilities. That turns out to be the more difficult part of the course and probably the most important. The first part is interesting for understanding how science works. But population level studies are the kind of thing that you will spend the rest of your life having to cope with and handle. We get told all the time about various studies that show various things. You're not supposed to drink coffee. You are supposed to drink coffee. You're not supposed to drink alcohol. You are supposed to drink red wine. All sorts of studies. Chocolate, it turns out, sometimes seems to be correlated with weight loss. Just eat a bar of chocolate and your weight loss dreams will come true. It turns out that's one of the classic cases of fraudulent scientific investigation. And we'll study that a bit too. So we're gonna look at respectable science and we can call it disreputable science. Geary calls it marginal science. Earlier versions of the textbook called it pseudoscience. The reason he switched is because it's very hard to characterize the difference between science and non-science what counts as a scientific study versus something that's not scientific at all. In order to characterize that, you'd have to be able to demarcate science from non-science. And there was a long project of trying to do that starting in the 1920s and 30s. By the 1970s and 80s, the project was viewed as a hopeless one. There's no way to characterize in general what makes something scientific and what makes it non-scientific. That doesn't mean we can't tell the difference between good science and bad science, between reputable studies and disreputable studies. So we're gonna work a little bit on that. But in any case, the first part of the course is about 
non-statistical scientific methods and standards. And the second part is about statistical ones. So we'll start with chapters one and two for the first week. And each week there is homework due. Well, not every week. Sometimes it's every other week. As you can see from the course outline, there are eight homework assignments that are due. And they are due according to the schedule in the course outline. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do. The class time will be done virtually using these videos created from the slides for the course. The most important thing for you to pay attention to today is how grades are determined. So grades are a function of two exams, one on chapters one through four, and the second one on chapters five through 10. In addition to the take-home exams, there will be homework assignments. The homework assignments are due by 5 p.m. on Friday, 5 p.m. St. Louis time, starting in week two. So you can see from the course outline that there is no homework required for week one. There is only homework. The first homework assignment is due at the end of week two. You can also see that there's no homework due in week three. Chapter three will take up weeks three and four of the semester, and the second homework assignment is due at the end of that period. So at the end of week four, homework two is due, and you can see how the pattern works. If there are two weeks for a given chapter, the homework isn't due until the second Friday of those two weeks. We'll have a review and test in week number seven, and we will also do the final exam in week 14 of the semester. I do that rather than have you take a final exam because everything gets crowded and busy during finals week. So we don't have an actual final for the course. We just have two exams that cover part of the material for the course. The thing that is takes more explanation is how the homework is to be done. And I want you to notice at the top of the page, there's a bolded sentence. Homework should be entered into Canvas in the discussion area. So when you go to Canvas and you go to this course, there will be an area called discussion. When you click on that, I'll create a journal in there and you just enter your homework assignments into the journal section. It doesn't really matter to me how you enter them. You can do them handwritten and enter pictures, JPEGs of your homework. You can enter them as Word documents or PDF documents. The important thing is do not enter them late. The point of entering them into Canvas is that I can have a record of when you entered them. And if they're late, you don't get any credit for them. So the homework is graded pass-fail. There are eight homework assignments. Each exam counts for 40% of the grade, and the remainder is based on homework and class participation. Homework is obvious. Class participation is primarily conducted through Zoom meetings during office hours. You can also participate in the class by contacting me by email as well. So anytime you have questions, I'm fairly responsive about email. If you email me late in the late in the evening, say after five o'clock or so, I may not get to it till the morning. But during the day, I'm pretty much accessible anytime by email. In addition, at the bottom of the syllabus, you can see there are course notes. These are clickable links to the material that we're going to be covering from the Geary book. So that will be available to you, and that's the material that I'm going to use for creating these videos that cover the course material. In any case, that's enough for today. That covers the basic housekeeping things that we have to worry about for the course. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me by 